Hi guys, how you doing? Hope you're all well. So things are getting a bit fun now. In this video, we're going to be making a half wave rectifier, which is literally, I mean, this is two half wave rectifiers <laughs> on this breadboard. So it is basic. It's nice, man. And that's that's how it looks, the input and output. Uh, so we're going to be making a half wave rectifier, which basically takes an AC signal. As you can see, here, I've got a dodgy sine wave looking thing takes an AC signal and then it produces this rectified DC signal. And it, it, I mean, it's quite amazing to be honest with you. So we'll, we'll run through how that works. Um, and then in the next video, we'll make a full wave rectifier, which is just this, where you get four of them. If you've watched Electro Boom's videos, he says, was it, oh, oh wait, he shouts something, full bridge rectifier, I, I don't know what he says. Make a full bridge rectifier. So we'll make a full bridge rectifier and do the same thing that we do in this video, but for the full bridge one. But this video will be half wave rectifier. And then once I've once we've done the half wave and the full wave, then what we're going to do is we're actually going to add the rectified output, which is this yellow line here. We're going to add that into a series linear regulator. So let's jump into the schematic first of all. We've got an AC input here, which in my case is 12 volts, 50 hertz. Usually this would be mains voltage, so you know 120 volts, 240 volts, whatever, depends on the country you're in. But I didn't want to mess about mains voltage, so instead of doing that, I just used a 12 volt sine wave input using my function generator because you know I didn't want to be cutting in mains wires and sticking mains into my breadboard circuit and I got small kids yeah not worth it so I stuck to 12 volts sine wave um, same thing basically right just a sine wave 12 volts so here you've got the AC input you've got one diode and then you got a, lo a load resistor so this is RL the load load resistor so what you're doing is you're just taking the voltage output here V out here across this load resistor so basically i mean the load resistor doesn't really need to be there the circuit is just these two it's just the ac input and one di one diode and the way that it works is quite amazing so you you guys probably already know this but you got a sine wave input and then when that meets the diode here the diode will conduct when current's going that way so the diode will conduct and it will be a short circuit basically so it allows for the first for the first part, the positive cycle of the input signal here, it, the diode will allow that current through, right? And so you'll get a voltage here. Yeah, it will allow the voltage to come through here on this side. Then for the negative half cycle, the diode is now an open circuit, right? Because, you know, as the signal is coming back this way now, for the second, for the negative cycle of the AC input, then what you're going to get is an open circuit because the diode is now reverse biased and therefore you don't get any output here and so you just get you get zero basically for the second cycle so you got positive and then negative is zero and so what that ends up looking like is you got this kind of signal where here at the input you've actually got you know full on sine wave so that's how the circuit works it's basic and so if you look here you can see i run my simulation on multi-sim and this is my input signal sine wave and this is my output so you can see it's literally just dot 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 like that and so what we actually do is we want to rectify this sig this signal so that we can turn it into more of a dc i'll show you on the breadboard all right so here's the breadboard circuit i've got my diode which is this diode here and then I've got my resistor here, which is going to ground, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my sine wave input here at the positive rail. It's going to come over here, come to the diode, and then go through resistor to ground. Then for the, the opposite cycle, the negative cycle, it's going to come the resistor, and then obviously going to come to this diode. Current's not going to be allowed to pass. This is basically an open circuit. And so then you're just going to get the negative half cycle where nothing's going to be recorded. So... Let me go and put my sine wave input in here, and then what I'll do is I will read, uh, use my oscilloscope to show the output of this circuit so we can see it, and you should see this on the oscilloscope. Okay, so here I've got my sine wave coming in here, and then I've got my ground here. So with this scope here, or this uh, alligator clip, I'm going to look at the input coming in to the circuit, and so if you look at my oscilloscope here, you can see we've got a nice sine wave very very pretty beautiful sine wave coming in so now if I move now my oscilloscope here across the load resistor here 
So this is V out now. We can see we no longer have that smooth sine wave. You can see it's now just taking the first cycle and then the negative cycle, it's a uh, zero. Cool, right? So here you can see that this is the two of them side by side and you can see literally perfectly. So I'm looking at the input voltage and then the output and it, it matches exactly perfectly. <laughs> So yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing really. I love this stuff, this is brilliant. All right, so what can we do now? Because you can see we want DC voltage. So you can see here, although we're rectifying, um, we're removing you know, the negative cycle. So it's not, you know, now it's not no longer an AC signal, right? What we want is we want to flatten this to get a proper DC value. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna chuck a capacitor in there. So here's what we're gonna do. We're actually going to take this, um, this is our load resistor, right, RL. And then what we do is we just put a capacitor just literally in parallel across it as well. So we're still going to be reading our voltage now. We're going to be reading it off. Our V out is going to be from our capacitor now. But it's obviously going to be the same because they're in, they're in parallel, right? So we're now going to read our voltage here at this point from the capacitor. So I've got 100 microfarads there. What we'll do is we'll start off with a 10 microfarad capacitor. Uh, this is 22. This is 10. Should be 10. Yeah, 10. So we'll start off with a 10 microfarad capacitor. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take it and just drop it across this resistor. So same, make sure you get it in parallel. Right there. Okay. And then so now we're going to read the voltage across this capacitor here and let's see what it looks like I'm taking the voltage now across the capacitor and if you have a look the yellow is the input voltage for whatever reason it kind of like it goes not a bit non sinusoidal but it doesn't it doesn't really matter but the blue is the output across the capacitor and you can see that look at that compared to you know the previous bumps that we had like this right we had that at the output before now we've got this pretty much straight DC line. I mean, it's not perfect, right? But we now have a DC output. So I can now feed this into a linear regulator. And so that's what capacitors do. Now, this is a 10, uh, I think, microfarad capacitor. Yeah, micro, 10 microfarad capacitor. As I increase the, I mean, at the moment we're at 20 volts per division, just so that I could, you know, compare the two um, side by side but if we go a bit more in with this one you, see, you can see it kind of like looks like that when you zoom in closer basically if you go into the same you can see like just put them both to scale <laughs> basically uh, but yeah so this is the let's just turn off the input this is it now with a 10 microfarad capacitor fully zoomed in so now if I just take this 10 one out and just chuck in a 20 22 you're going to see it's going to get even the dips are going to get even smaller and the, the dc straight line is going to get even straighter and then we'll do the same with the 100 fire uh 100 microfarad capacitor as well this is it with 22 and you and you can see it's literally half the size and the exact same setup i haven't zoomed in anymore still at one volts and yeah literally half the size with 22 so now if i chuck in this bigger 100 fire 100 microfarad ca capacitor it's gonna get a lot better and there we go straight 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 as can be so let's just turn back on my uh, input one okay we go to 20 volts and then let's make this 20 volts as well so look at that <laughs> that is a perfectly strip pretty much perfectly straight DC voltage just from this like mad basic circuit you're talking about a diode a resistor and a capacitor like that's crazy man it is nuts how simple the stuff is so yeah so um in the next video we'll do the same but with a full wave one at the moment we're currently wasting the negative half cycle obviously because we're just removing we're, we're literally leaving it out but when we use the full wave one which is free just basically three more extra diodes on top of this one uh, we're going to get a much better DC line. And then what we'll do is we'll feed this into a linear voltage regulator. So I'm learning a bunch. I can't even believe I even understand the words that are coming out of my mouth right now. That's how nuts <laughs> this is for me. But I'm enjoying it, man. This is absolutely brilliant stuff. 
So yeah, if you want to get more and more of a straight line on your uh, DC voltage, DC output, I mean, look, this is like, okay, you can see there, as you zoom in more, so you can see it's still a little bit bumpy, I mean, we could probably put a bigger capacitor in, but ultimately, look, you know, that's going to be good enough, but yeah, alright, we'll move on, Let's next video we'll do the full wave one, thanks for watching guys, take care, leave a like.